Okay, please take your seat. I think we want to start uh, now because the program is very packed and we need to be on time for the following event. So first of all, I would like to welcome you all to this uh, MI SAM event that has been jointly organized by the Green Power Future Mission and ISGAN, the International Smart Grid Action Network. Since uh, this event uh, is being live stream, I would like also to give a warm welcome to all colleagues around the world that are connected remotely. Uh, we are very delighted having this possibility and we'd like to thank the SEM organizer and the MICE organizer for giving us this opportunity and of course also USDOE for being uh, the organizer of the Global Clean Energy Action Forum. We have a very important program today and I'd like just to anticipate that I will be introducing with this slide uh, the first two sessions with important opening remarks from three leading countries that are both involved in ISGAN and in the Green Power Future Mission, namely Korea, uh, China, and Italy. We have a, a leadership in both or in one of them. And so we would like to start now inviting the 11 representative from Korea. So, uh, Deputy Minister of Ministry of Trade and Industry and Energy, Moti, in Korea, to address a few words to the audience. Please. Mm. 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 Uh, 예, 안녕하십니까. 대한민국 uh, 산업통상자원부 에너지 산업실장 전영길이라고 합니다. 오늘 뜻깊은 행사에 참석하게 되어서 진심으로 감사를 드립니다. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Deputy Minister Chun Young-gil for Energy Industry of the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy of the Republic of Korea. I'm very happy to meet you all today and I'm very happy to take part in this meaningful event. 아, 전력 구문의 청정 에너지 전환을 위한 아, 다자간 협력 플랫폼으로서 이스강과 GPFM의 기여를 높이 평가하고 있습니다. Korea highly praises the contribution of ISKAN and GPFM as a multilateral cooperative platform uh, that pursues the transition to clean energy in the field of electricity. 아, 한국은 2011년 이후로 계속 이스간 사무국을 운영하고 있으며 2021년 아, 미션 이노베이션 내 GPFM 출범 당시부터 회원국으로도 활동을 하고 있습니다. Korea has operated the ISKCON Secretariat since 2011 and then from the launching of the GPFM in 2021 we are working as a member country. 전력 부문의 청정 에너지 전환은 재생 에너지 시스템의 안정화 그리고 첨단 전력망의 구축, 장주기 대용량 ESS 활용 등이 뒷받침되어야 하는 바 여러 국가의 기술과 제조 용량을 아, 결집할 때 성공이 가능하다고 어, 보고 있습니다. In order to make a successful transition uh, towards the clean energy in the field of electricity, we need to stabilize renewable energy system, establish the high-tech uh, electricity grid, and utilize the long-period large-scale ESS. So I believe that we can only succeed when we uh, gather all the technologies and capabilities of all countries around the world. Uh, 한국은 2022년 5월 새 정부 에너지 정책 방향을 발표하면서 합리적인 에너지 믹스를 뒷받침하는 미래형 전력망을 구축하고 ESS 기술 혁신을 지원했다고 어, 발표를 한바 있습니다. The new government of Korea, which was launched in last May this year, announced a new policy to pursue the new energy policy under the new government. And in the plans, uh, we have announced that we are going to establish the future type electricity grid and make innovation in ESS in order to support the reasonable energy mix. Uh, 아, 감사를 드립니다. 오늘 재생에너지 전력의 저렴하고 안정적인 공급을 추구하는 GPFM과 
스마트 그리드 확산을 추구하는 이스카운 간 MOU 체결을 계기로 해서 전력 시스템 전환의 전 분야를 포괄하는 국제 협력이 가능할 것으로 기대를 합니다. 감사합니다. I'd like to thank you very much for organizing this uh, various uh, programs uh, that will let us share the various insights and experiences. And I am sure that the signing of MOU between GPFM and ISCAN will help us to bring more affordable, stable electricity based on renewable energy for all of us and then to allow the international cooperation between all the stakeholders. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind words uh, and sharing with us uh, these important messages. We need Korea for all the endeavor, all the activity we want to perform. So thank you very much for supporting the ISGAN Secretariat and other important activity. Thank you so much. Okay, now it's the turn to invite uh, another important Asian country, China, that is uh, co-leading the Green Power Future Mission. It's also an important member of INSCAN. Futao Chen, Councilor, Minister Councilor from the Embassy of Washington, D.C. in the U.S. Please. Uh, distri distinguished Green Power Future Mission and ISCON members and partners, very good morning. On behalf of the Ministry of Science and Technology of China, I'm very pleased to be here today to extend warm congratulations to the side event of boosting the power system transition innovation through GPFM and ISCAN. I wish to thank colleagues from Italy and United Kingdom for their out outstanding teamwork done so far and the coalition members for their strong contributions and active engagement in the mission. At the world's largest renewable energy market and the world's largest manufacturer of clean energy and equipment, China active, actively participates in mission innovation and is firmly committed to cooperate in mission innovation activities. We believe that by working with international partners, we can actively, effectively accelerate the implementation of innovative in solutions so as to accelerate the transition from clean energy to net zero emissions. Global challenges require global solutions. Therefore, we are very glad to see the release of the action plan 2022 to 2024 will soon be released. As we strive to substantially accelerate innovation in the next decades, we first proposed two flagship projects, namely five demos in five continents and multilateral research programs. We will also seek to further enhance support in the research development and demonstration activities during the next decade to achieve the mission goal, especially in the international areas to achieve affordable, secure, and resilient power system with up to 100% VRE. So let me extend my best wishes to all of you and wish the event a total success. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind words. I would like to stress that we have really a very good collaboration with China and UK in the leading of this important mission. Thank you so much for all that you are supporting. Colleagues from Chinese, of, uh, Chinese Academy of Science and of course most. It's now that my turn to invite uh, our head of the delegation, Renzo Tomellini, that is the head of the uh, Technical Secretariat of the Minister to say a few words uh, about the mission and this again. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first, uh, bring the greetings of uh, um, Minister Professor Dr. Roberto Cingolani, who has to be in the uh, UN General Assembly at the same moment. So not far from here in your city, but not re really here. So best greetings from him. Uh, key word of this uh, global forum is acceleration. Other key word is collaboration. 
on the basis of these two key words, is Gan is a jewel, eh? is, a, is a point of excellence, is exactly what, uh, what we, we need to see to accelerate research, uh, development, and deployment of uh, clean technologies for power system transformation and decarbonization. So, very important role you have, uh, in, uh, a leading responsibility in this, uh, uh, in this uh, transition process, complex transition process. Uh, from the point of view of the public administrations, what we have to do, we have to set the scene, uh, provide means, uh, um, uh, provide input, uh, but also monitor the achievements. So it's very important to come here and learn from you your achievements, your progress, so what you have done, not only what you will do, but to what you have done. And this is extremely important. Italy, uh, from its side, uh, is very proud to be a leader uh, in uh, the smart grids and uh, one of more in engaged and advanced countries uh, in developing and implementing smart grid solutions and technologies, as well as energy efficiency measures and energy storage integration and policies. So for us is uh, essential further developing uh, more resilient and sustainable energy system. And uh, we believe that of course, uh, we have to do this in international cooperation as much as we, as we can. It was mentioned uh, uh, already by the, by the previous speakers, and so with this uh, very good work uh, to uh, ISGAN. Thank you very much. The support from the Ministry of Ecological Transition was always present. We were able to use all the resources needed for run, running this important initiative, ISGAN and the Green Power Future Mission. So thank you very much for being with us. We know that you are all busy with other events as well. Thank you. I think we can move on to the first uh, session where we would like to give you just an introduction to both initiatives. They are similar, but they are different. That's why we want to leverage uh, eye complementarity. It's not the best position to show the slide, as you said, so, <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, we will try. So I will start with uh, just a quick slide about the Green Power Future Mission. You know that uh, we have been launched uh, last year in June. Is it working? Ah, oh, perfect. Thank you. So it's been launched last year in June 2020. 21. So in 18 months or less, we already developed one joint roadmap and now we are ready to make some other announcement. So our main goal is really to prove that there are already possibility to use existing solution to make a power system around the world working with up to 100% renewable energies, variable renewable energies, and to maintain these as cost efficient, reliable and resilient. We want to demonstrate those solutions in our pilot, in our project. We want also to analyze not only technical matter, but also policy, business models, and the regulatory framework, because we want to move all these uh, at the same pace. And then what is important that we will generate the knowledge, and this knowledge will be shared with mission innovation members and beyond. We can rely on a very strong uh, coalition already. You see China, Italy, and UK co-leading the mission, but many other 10 other important mission innovation countries are already on board. On top of that, we can rely on the support from three key international organizations, IRENA, IEA, and the World Bank. And finally, we would like to stress that this is really a public-private partnership because we already have 11 key actors for the private sector. We need those actors because we want to make a demonstration, we want to make a activity in the real setting, the real grid, so they are really key for the future step of our mission. One important aspect, I said the coalition is strong, but could be even stronger from today because we are very happy to accommodate Spain as a new member of the core team of our mission. They are fully devoted to power and they already attend our last two ESCO meeting. So thank you to Spain, congratulations. This is the first announcement of today, Spain be on board of our mission. Then, I will be fast. We, in the first sprint of activity, develop what we call the joint roadmap of global innovation priority, identify 17 RNI themes, and also the top 100 global innovation priority we have to tackle in order to really make possible modernization and decarbonization of our power system. Uh, we released this roadmap at COP26, 
And today, what we are releasing is another document that is called Action Plan. It's an Action Plan 2022-2024. So three years of activity where we plan for launching two important and very ambitious flagship projects, as been mentioned already by our Chinese colleagues, five demos in five continents, maybe even six continents, let's see. And then also to launch uh, a multilateral research program that will be worth more than $100 million in three years. So something really viable for making possible activity in future. So this is just uh, one slide to tell you more about the flagship project one, five demos in five continents. The idea will be to leverage the possibility from each of the member country and having national pilot uh, coordinated at a national level and possibly well coordinated also at continental level. These are two schemes, one for Europe, one for Asia, but this will be the scheme to be used also for the other country. Even though in the other continent we have less uh, wealthy situation with less members than in, in these two continents. The other flagship project is really important because we concentrate on 20 selected innovation priority and we will make available new funding for RNI to be used to really make uh, this uh, innovation priority not a barrier anymore, but something viable for being used in the real life. And we have already defined the topic, we define already the country that will be contributing to this uh, endeavor. Thank you. Finally, I would like to say that uh, everything is about international collaboration. We talk about uh, collaborating, getting together, accelerating innovation. This is why we are very much focused on connecting to the other initiative. W today we will sign an MOU with ISGAN, but we have already very good uh, interaction with other initiative, Triden, that is led by IEA, Power Breakthrough. We contributed to their action and their report, and also other missions, like for example, the Urban Transition Mission and maybe the Hydrogen Mission as well. Thank you very much. The last comment I want to make is that uh, everything will be made public. We are developing what we call the Green Power Future Mission platform, internet-based platform, where all results, all best practices and material will be made available for members and also for the other people that are interested to make uh, their system de fully decarbonized soon. Thank you very much for your attention. These are just the connection of the team, pillar lead, uh, myself as a director. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. From speaker to moderator, now I would like to invite uh, my friend uh, John Ward from CSIRO in Australia to give uh, a, a, an introduction to ISGAN. It will be not easy because ISGAN is a very important initiative, but you will do your best. Thank you. Thank you, Luciano. Um, <coughs> so this is going to be tricky with the slides. So very quick introduction to ISGAN. So firstly, welcome for coming today. Um, really great event. Um, Start with ISGAN in a nutshell. So um, ISGAN is collaboration between, um, or a joint initiative between the International Energy Agency and Clean Energy Ministerial. It's the technical collaboration program for smart grids, so International Smart Grid Action Network. And I apologize, I'm gonna keep looking around the corner to check um, what's going on with the slides. So in a nutshell, um, 27 contracting parties, parties um, so 26 governments plus the EU. We're um, supported by co-secretariat, um, secretariat, operating agents, and um, the Presidium, particularly through the AIT and um, KSGI. And there's um, six working groups that we focus our um, work um, across. In terms of uh, vision, this is um, really supported by participation of um, each of the governments, and that um, is really important to focus on um, that the areas where we particularly look are where the governments are able to have a direct authority and influence. So accelerating smart grid policies, technologies, um, and the implementation through policy standards regulations, finance, business models, technology system deployment, workforce and skills, and um, user engagement. The key mechanism that um, we operate really is around peer-to-peer um, -peer knowledge exchange. The key themes that we look at are flexibility, digitization, interoperability, and resilience. There's no direct technology development or demonstration through ISGAN, but we partner extensively. So my very last slide will be a list of some of the current partners that we have, and today we're celebrating those partnerships. Um, in terms of value proposition, 
yes, I'm still on track. Um, some of the examples of things that we again work on, case books, technology briefs, policy briefs, webinars, um, conference presentation, workshops, technical papers. We disseminate them broadly internationally. Um, and to try and um, give you a very tangible example of um, why me from Australia am involved in that, just looking for an example, um, one of the um, work groups is SURFN, which is a collaboration of smart grid laboratories internationally. And through that network, we're able to share examples and understanding of how we tackle things, what are the pieces of equipment we work on, what are the international standards that we're all um, working and checking against, and able to have a um, good standardized approach to how we tackle these things. So I can do a testing in Australia that um, is completely comparable with testing that's done in Germany or the US or some of the other partner laboratories international. And an example of the outcome of that is that we're able to identify some of the strange interactions you get and some of the different um, control mechanisms in inverters that could have caused voltage oscillations in our system. We're able to pick that up and get our standards um, updated to make sure that that didn't happen. So that's a very tangible example and there are many other examples across ISGAN. And with that, as I said, key thing here is the partnerships. This is a list of some of the existing partnerships we've got. We celebrate these partnerships. ISGRAM does not exist on its own. It's through those partnerships that we get the most impact. Um, and I'll leave it at that. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Perfect. You were making a very good introduction to ISGRAM. It was not an easy job. Okay, now we can move on and we have uh, two distinguished keynotes uh, and uh, we ask uh, two outstanding international organizations to speak about. So we have uh, IEA and IRENA that will be making clear what is needed, where are we, uh, where we have to go. We always need uh, to uh, get uh, this information in order to really tailor our future activity. So I would like to invite uh, first uh, uh, Brian Motherway to come here as a director at uh, IEA. He will be giving a presentation, but uh, he, we are ready, I think, a couple of minutes later, so if you save a little time, it will be very helpful. I don't know if you want to be there. Can I use that? Uh, yeah, 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 thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no. Thanks. Uh, I will speak quickly. Luciano, thank you very much, and thanks to uh, ISGAN and, and, of course, Green Powered Future and all the partners. And um, Renzo had to leave us, but I do want to record uh, our thanks uh, to Minister Cingolani and the whole ministry who've been really supportive, Italy is showing global leadership in, in this issue and also a supporter of our work through in particular 3DEN that Luciana mentioned, which stands for uh, Digital Demand Driven uh, 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 digital demand driven Electricity Networks and a focus on smart grids and system thinking and particularly the role of the demand side in that, which I'll say a little bit about. So it's a delight to be here and to hear all the great interventions, so thank you. Um, yeah, so Net zero, we, we, the IEA is looking at the pathway to net zero and two key words begin with E, then that's elect electrification and efficiency. And I, I really want to stress the, the need for scale up in investment and deployment of key technologies, particularly in this decade. This is no longer a, pro a project that we look beyond the horizon. 2022 to 2030 are key years and if we don't really accelerate investment and deployment, then we will never catch up in terms of our net zero goals. And just to give you a sense of that, we're all the growth we have seen in solar and wind in the last couple of years, which has really been impressive and encouraging. We have to quadruple that this decade. Electric vehicles growing really fast, particularly in China, US and Europe. It has to go up by 15 to 18 times by the end of this decade. And energy efficiency, which is improving globally, it needs to actually about triple its current rate of improvement if we're to meet our goals. All of those things need to happen now, driven by innovation and investment. Electricity systems are key because we're electrifying heat, we're electrifying transport, we're building bigger grids, we're growing particularly renewable sources of electricity like solar and wind very successfully. But we need investment, not just in those sources, but in the networks. Uh, and as you can see here on the right in particular, the digitalization and the smartification of those networks is really key. I and mean, that's where we need to see a lot of focus. And that's why the work of ISGAN and the other partners here is really cr crucial to look at what those technologies are and how to drive those investments. And our work with Italy and ISGAN and other partners in 3DEN is really focused on what are the policies that will drive that faster investment that we need to see. 
It means that electricity systems of the future are not the same as the past, and we're no longer talking about centralized uh, dispatchable power uh, going out there and just being used in, in relatively unidirectional ways. We're looking at much more dynamic and interconnected systems that really require quite different thinking. And I think it's particularly revolutionary on the demand side, because when it, the kind of concepts that have penetrated our supply side thinking in electricity around time and location of use and dynamic control are now also coming to the demand side in terms of demand side flexibility, the time value of energy efficiency, and of course we're seeing this right now in many parts of the world facing crises. Just last week here in the US and California, recently in Japan, uh, in Europe certainly it's a, it's a very constant debate right now and that whole thing about dynamic system-wide thinking is really crucial. And it means that policy making has to be different. And I think that what we want to achieve in electricity grids and smart grids of the future exemplifies the path we're on in terms of policy and governance for net zero as a whole because we're no longer working in silos. We no longer can think about energy efficiency policies separate to grid policies, separate to supply policies. We now need to think about it in a much more holistic and dynamic way and that's a real challenge to policy makers to think about think things in ways that they're not used to. Net zero uh, decarbonization, clean energy is not compartmentalizable in the way that many of the societal challenge we, we have faced in the past and I think that's going to be a really important dynamic and that's why the technical inputs and the dialogues and the partnerships we're focused on here today are really crucial and it's why we're delighted to be a part of those partnerships, delighted to be in this dialogue today and looking forward to continuing all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brian. Excellent, very fast to the point, and I would like to acknowledge the strong support we already received from IA, also Action Plan, also receive a lot of input from you that make it, I hope, better, much better. <laughs> Thank you. So it's now the time to invite Irina to come on stage, and they will also tell us uh, what it will be the future, talking about renewables, and in our case, integration of renewables in power system. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, is the microphone working? Good, you can hear me. Uh, I must admit, my name is David Dadge, and I'm the Chief Communications Officer at IRENA, okay? So I will be reading my speech. Uh, I've only been at IRENA for six months, so I lack the technical knowledge, but please do criticize the delivery, perhaps. Anyway, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for inviting IRENA to speak today. We are looking at a fundamental shift in our energy system with every aspect of our lives being impacted in some way. We know that the production and consumption of energy is responsible for the vast majority of emissions. So logic dictates that there is no credible path to climate neutrality without decarbonizing it. In this new future, electricity will be the most important energy carrier. The leads of the MI Green Powered Future Mission from Italy, China, the UK, and now Spain have got it right um, and are working with other countries and knowledge partners, including IRENA, to demonstrate power systems with high shares of variable renewables by 2030. We congratulate the mission for another fantastic milestone in their work, the release of the action plan 2022 to 2024, and the announcements of the first sprints of your activities. We are very pleased to be a supporter of the Green Powered Future Mission, and we have done so since the very beginning. We're also looking forward to supporting you in addressing, addressing a critical issue for the energy transition, which is how to develop, implement, and operate power systems with close to 100% penetration of renewables, particularly in the current context. The voices of countries today are clear. We have seen the recent developments here in the USA with the Inflation Reduction Act and in the EU with the response to the energy crisis. ARENA has provided guidance to the mission on the innovation priorities and their action plan. Through ARENA's representation in the Mission Innovation Technical Advisory Group, 
we are ready to continue supporting the mission as knowledge partners. Together, we need to strive for a future energy system with electricity as a main energy carrier. Electricity sh electricity's share in the final energy demand has to increase from 21% today to 50% in 2050. Smart electrification approaches are therefore crucial. International collaboration, and there's that word again, is what is most needed. But I would also mention the close cousins of coordination and also communication. Well, I would, wouldn't I? So today, your work underpins the actions necessary for the energy transition, particularly through demonstration projects. And that is set to continue. And even though we are seeing huge change and challenge, there is also one constant, the fact that we have to work in partnership for the future. So count on us at ARENA. We are delighted to work with you, and we look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alvin. Thank you very much. I think uh, you touched a very important point, the essence of mission innovation, the importance of collaboration, the importance of partnership. This is something that we have in our bone, and we have friends in the room and connected remotely that they like working with us and sharing their knowledge and sharing their experience. And I would like to say that uh, IA and Irina are not only supporting, you are core team members, so you are the one that really make the pillar of this, our activity. So thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Now let's move on with the next session. And I'd like to invite uh, co-chair of the Science Steering Committee to come on stage. We have an important and distinguished panelist today, and we would be very capable to bring them out to tell us what we need to do in the coming days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, good evening. Please come to the Rita panel and invite the panel to come up. Thank you. So, uh, so today's uh, panelist, as we have uh, Amanda Wilson, if uh, you can uh, join, yeah. and Enric, yeah, these two, yeah. and Jordan Small. Thank you very much, and uh, for. Uh, for sparing your time, uh, thank, uh, thank you, the panelist. Uh, as we discussed uh, about this Clean Energy Ministerial and MI Action Forum, uh, which we started uh, as, a, as a joint plenary for about uh, since 2016. Uh, but in India, if uh, we are seen in this year, April, uh, we, uh, the, with the US co-chairship, we, we wanted to have the synergy between the Mission Innovation same not only in terms of only the uh, 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 housing the event back to back, but at the same time making it more synergistic, uh, finding opportunities, how do we really come out with the, <coughs> uh, the actions where, where the expertise of both the platform can be actually synergized and coming together with the more effective outcomes in that. So in this regard, today's discussion on GPFM and ISGAN, uh, this uh, collaboration is actually of uh, very critical importance. Uh, and in particular, if we talk about uh, this GCEF, which is the, the event which we are parting, the USTOA and Indian uh, government, we, we decided that it should not be only the government to government uh, uh, forum discussing the issues, but we should involve the larger community stakeholders, NGOs, uh, industry, and of course, the all kinds of financial instruments. So in this regard, uh, let me uh, start with the, the panel discussion here, uh, Amanda. So what do you think that uh, the uh, opportunities lie in terms of the collaboration between the the GPFM and the the ISGAN. Uh, how do you see? What are your opening must what? Uh, and of course, uh, how do you see from your perspective this can this partnership can take forward for our objective? Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, 
I think the mic is working. Uh, and thanks to the organizers for organizing this event. I think it's a really nice opportunity to um, showcase the work that uh, both of these organizations have done individually and, and now collectively. So to answer your question, I think, um, you know, there, there are almost infinite possibilities in terms of uh, the work that these, these two initiatives could do together. And the good thing is they're building from a position of strength, um, having worked together uh, in the previous iteration of uh, Mission Innovation with, um, with ISGAN working very closely what, with what was then the, the Mission Innovation Challenge on smart grids. Uh, now we have the Green Power uh, Future Mission. I hope I got the name right. There's a lot of acronyms <laughs> floating around in my head. Um, but I think in many ways, um, the, the, this collaboration has, has broken a little bit of ground. And what we see here, as you said, our US hosts have picked up on it in terms of really trying to make the focus of this overall um, Global Clean Energy Action Forum, you know, focusing in on what do we need to do to work better together from our d and and innovation right through to deployment. Um, and so I think in many ways, um, this alliance of these two organizations uh, can can show uh, either missions or uh, SEM initiatives or, or TCPs or what have you, what the art of the possible is in terms of working together so that you're accelerating um, that cycle from lab through to market. And I think, you know, as we, it was always important to do that for the sake of the environment. I think now with the uh, energy security situation being what it is in the world, it's even more uh, important that we collaborate and uh, you know work closely to make sure that we can get the solutions out there as soon as possible. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Amanda. That's what indeed a uh, good context you have said. So uh, if I turn to Indic, uh, based on your uh, the organization and your engagement in CMMI, how do you see that uh, if if I if I seek your opening. Uh, opening inputs, uh, how do you uh, see the future of this partnership and uh, what are the priorities uh, uh, in coming years where these two platforms will actually head to? First of all, thank you for the invitation. Good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, before starting, I just would like to say what is the perspective that I am bringing. Uh, I work for a quite large energy company which uh, has some 75 million people which are connected to our grids every day and depend from our grids. We are also the largest private developer of renewable energy resources, which are connected also or feeding more and more the grid with the same objective that uh, we have in, in the mission. And we are a provider of electrification services, whether it is electric mobility chargers, but also it was mentioned before, very much demand response. So the way that you can tackle it from, from another angle. Now, we have seen an incredible opportunity for us to join the mission since the beginning. So we have been one of, uh, of the founder because we believe uh, really in the uh, end scope of the mission, 2030 decarbonized uh, sustainable grid, it is possible. We have the technology, we have proven it in certain areas, of course, to a different scale. We have been happy, by the way, to contribute with, with our experience to the roadmap and to the priority setting. What I think is quite interesting, at least for us to share, is really the journey in digitalization that we have started some 20 years ago. And this is very important for the grid. I mean, we couldn't do or think about this some years ago. Now we can with the smart meters, with smart grids, with digital twin, which are helping us uh, commanding all the, all the flows. That's something that it becomes possible. So we would like to share of course, our experience, we are part of some demonstration projects. But more important than that, no matter how big you are, I mean, the, the task is so big. It needs every, everybody. And clearly, these initiatives are showing that private sector is a very important part. The public sector is another one, which has to be the public opinion, too and especially the attention that we will have to put together in not only reaching the objective of the mission, 
let's say, in more developed countries, but or in areas which are more affluent, where it's much, much easier. Uh, but all the effort that we have to do in bringing these uh, in underprivileged areas, that's something also that is part of the mission. So we are looking forward to further contribute to this joining. I think uh, this is another example today of uh, two, two initiatives converging. Everything is converging and, and joining for only one objective, acceleration. We are not saying if, uh, we are not saying how, we are just saying how fast we can do it. Yeah, that's indeed uh, a very uh, a clear statement that uh, the only objective is to actually fast, do it fast or fast forward, yeah. So turning on to John, uh, so from uh, uh, your side, uh, the what are the government perspective, as mentioned, if, if you want to really move forward in a much quicker, much faster manner. So what do you see uh, uh, the, the push or the, the kind of support which the government said uh, you expect or you can envisage uh, to make sure that these two platforms come together and move faster than uh, what, what has been there and to meet the objectives in the most uh, effective and uh, quickest manner. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks very much. And I mean, I want to just say thank you to sort of Luciano. I mean, they, we've worked together on this from the beginning, I suppose, of the um, the program, and it's just fantastic to see some of the outputs that are coming together now, particularly the action plan that um, I think is. Um, you know, if you haven't seen a sort of copy of it yet, it's a superb document and well worth well worth a read. Um, so, yeah, I mean, where, where do we start? Um, the UK has been really strongly committed both to um, the, sort of the, well, to the, the whole sort of flexibility agenda, really, but um, you know, we're co-leading GPF. Um, we are a member of ISCAN, and um, why are we doing it? It's because of the potential savings that you can achieve in terms of the journey to, to net zero if you get the, the whole sort of um, flexibility flexibility piece right and you know we've the more we've modeled this and to be fair our modeling to begin with was not very good um, but has improved significantly over, over the years you know we're seeing tens of billions of pounds saving from getting flexibility right which is not just about having your storage um, and having it in the right place but it's controlling it in, in the right most effective way to get the, the most out of it and you know we you know, we're not in a position at the moment where there's bags of money to go around. So the more we can do to sort of reduce the cost of net zero is clearly you know, what's really, really important. So that's why you know, the UK is putting a lot of effort into this, and it's not something that's about to sort of go away. Um, and in, if anything, it's becoming sort of more and more important as we've you know, seen sort of the, the gas crisis causing a sort of more of a sort of an acceleration of deployment of renewables which has made the, sort of, the looming problem of how do we balance the grids um, much more, much, much quicker, um, or you know, becoming a problem much more quickly. So again, you know, it's all about that acceleration. And you know, I'm, I'm very, very taken by the, sort of, the words earlier, earlier on about sort of collaborate and accelerate. And you know, the best way of, um, of accelerating things is to share knowledge around, um, understand what doesn't work as well as what does work, and actually, if you can demonstrate something works, um, you know, other people can follow that very quickly. And it's you know, the best way of accelerating things is successful demonstrations. And that's why, as far as the um, UK is concerned, we're very keen to get involved in the, the flagships. And um, Project Whiteley, which is one of our green hydrogen programs, um, linking a sort of wind farm into um, a highly flexible um, long duration energy storage um, system. I think will be a great sort of examples of the projects we're trying to put together as far as this is concerned. So that's a sort of starting point. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, so uh, thanks uh, for the the the, uh, the opening uh, perspective what you're given. Now I'll try to turn to some more technical questions and the uh, specific uh, areas where we can say. So uh, Amanda, uh, turning to you. So when we see the green powered future mission, which is of course the uh, as part of MI 2.0 and very ambitious uh, uh, mission, we can say, among the different things. Uh, the, the kind of challenges which you would see, see, if we, if we talk about the power system as ever, in, in particular the, the distribution part of that, where we need the smart gates, we need. Now, the complete landscape is uh, moving entirely in a different part. As just now John mentioned about the hydrogen, 
Uh, we will need a lot of uh, solar energy uh, being used uh, uh, intermittently to produce hydrogen, which is different from that what we were lighting the houses and the uh, lighting the industries or powering the industries. Uh, there will be different areas of storage. Storage coming where we will come up in big way. So how do we see this? Uh, uh, the, these challenges getting into the kind of uh, the technical aspects of uh, uh, the entire grid system being changed, or will it be uh, sufficient just to upgrade the existing utilities uh, to more amenable to the future change? So, so do you think that there will be a major change, or ca can we just upgrade the existing uh, utilities or the existing uh, uh, system into? a new, new way it has to be transformed to meet the future challenges of the green power system. Yeah, I mean, I, I will defer to uh, the technical experts on the technical <laughs> side of things. So um, I'm, I, I'm more involved in the uh, sort of the theories of how we can work together better in order to accelerate, uh, you know, technologies of this nature. I would say that um, one of the things or one of the values that I think comes from this sort of international collaboration is the ability of having the experts and the technical um, officials work together, just as, as Luciano mentioned at the outset that they have done, in order to pinpoint those areas where we know there are common um, common goals, shared objectives, where we agree that this is the marker we need to head toward, and then figure out what is it that the various players, including as my colleague here mentioned, uh, from the private sector, the government, and so on, can, can bring to bear. Um, so I will, with apologies, leave the technical question to the experts, um, but I'll, I'm happy to hand it back to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'll, so I'll frame the question. But before I go to Enric, uh, so, uh, my, uh, my objective was to uh, discuss uh, the, the complete system or the new challenge, which we, the technical as well as the financial aspect. So when we, when we move on to a power system, which we are uh, going to uh, shift faster in the coming years, depending on the kind of energy transition happening. So the, apart from technical, the, the next important, perhaps the most important thing will be how to address the cost. So once you do a kind of a transformation, there is an investment, and that investment has to come from the consumer. and the uh, we can't afford that uh, the cost of energy to go up, the cost of electricity to go up, if we, if we are actually transforming the system. So, and the, so what do you see being uh, 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 come in charge of the company? Uh, so do you see that uh, there will be effect on the cost and whether it will also be a bit com competition to other modes of energy? So how do you see this expanding? Yeah. You know, I would have been more comfortable with the technical question. <laughs> 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 no, no, kidding about that. Uh, let me talk a moment about the technical. I think the grid were designed uh, for another power system. Of course, they have to evolve. The digitalization is helping. It's not the only solution. I mean, uh, we need to reinforce the grid and especially connect them with transmission, especially in certain areas like in the US. That's, that's probably what, uh, what we need to do not to increase the decarbonization of the grid today, but when we are arriving to much, much higher level, then, then you need uh, also the investments. Investments, of course, uh, need, uh, need money. Investments have another characteristic, need some time to be recovered. Investment need uh, a normally a framework in which there is some certainty in how you can operate, and that leads us uh, to the impo important role that regulation are doing, just in order to set the, the rules of engagement and help uh, private sector and public funding front the capital investment which are needed at the beginning, not the consumers, not the consumers. It has to be spread out in time, and it's happening uh, with proper regulation, and, but the beauty is, uh, and I have seen it, and I am a deep developer in, uh, believer in that, uh, you will reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. Effective investment upfront, if properly done, are guaranteeing a continuous dropping of the cost for the service. So I'm very positive on that. Of course, uh, the framework has to be there. The framework allowing this, this certainty, mobilizing the capital, which are keen to go, because this system or this sector is also very reliable. It's a core activity, so 
it is easy in reality to do. Yeah, thank you. So that's good. So uh, these two challenges, if I join, I can ask. So uh, I could see that the, the collaboration between the two platform can add, if they can address, uh, apart from the different areas, the, the key challenges of technical uh, and the financial or the investment. Of the, so how do you see that the from the government side, uh, uh, can you uh, think of policies where we are moving to a, a greener power trust system, but at the same time, without affecting uh, the, the consumers, uh, the affordability, reliability. So what do you think that the government should prioritize in terms of uh, making sure that the, uh, the electricity through the grids is available at the most reliable and affordable manner? And uh, what the, the, these two platforms should actually uh, collaborate on this aspect? Yeah, I mean, it's in a lot of ways it goes back to um, you know, the, the word that's been around for, for a decade now, which is the trilemma. Um, that at the end of the day, we have to have a system that is, is cost effective um, and affordable. Um, it's got to be reliable and it's got to be green. And those, you know, the, the emphasis may have changed a little bit over the last decade, but in reality, um, those are the three things that the government needs to concentrate on. And um, the rest of it then comes down to implementation. Um, but, you know, a little bit trite, but, um, you know, there, there are some huge challenges to overcome, overcome here. Um, but we've also got, the, you know, it's, it's quite interesting. We mentioned earlier on the sort of the arrangement between sort of MI and SEM sort of coming, to get some, coming together here. And I think this is symptomatic about what we're actually trying to achieve with innovation um, and deployment more generally. That if we want, if we want to sort of get the, sort of the most acceleration most quickly, um, then you need to have innovation working hand in hand with your policies to deploy this, this technology. And, you know, I mean, you commented about the, you know, the consumer shouldn't be affected by, by what's going on. Um, you know, the reality is that we're switching from a world where we had you know, 100 power stations um, providing power to consumers to a world where consumers are actually going to be choosing when they have their power. Um, they're going to want it whenever they want it. Um, but we're now, you know, 100 million sort of consumers that need to be sort of managed rather than simply 100 power stations. And that is a huge sort of challenge that we're going to have to, have to overcome. Um, because at the same time, you know, consumers do need to see a, a, a seamless um, transition, and we certainly don't need them trying to manage the, you know, their energy system on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. So. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Thank you so much. And in fact, we can, yeah. It's the same time now, you are perfect. You will have your presentation of uh, yeah. the just for good memory, and maybe you also have the time to yeah. follow our action plan. <laughs> yeah, action plan, that's why. Right. So, uh, we are very thankful for the panelists here. and. Yeah. Plan, yeah. So, do you want to stand or sit? Each one has a copy. It was a wonderful talking about uh, also regulatory framework that is important to be yeah. included in our activity. I understand it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Why green? Because it's green in transition, right? Are we endorsing the advertising? <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah. so thank you so much right. the panelists. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for leading the discussion. I think you, you touched a very important point, and uh, thank you for the panelists to be available also to bring their expertise and, and support to the discussion. So I miss them. <laughs> okay, now we are entering a little bit formal part of our event. Oh, I lost my mic. Um, I think we are going to uh, toward the end. We are now this uh, important aspect of formalizing the collaboration between the GPFM and ISGAN. I think uh, we did a signature of that time was a letter of intent in Rome. This time we have the pleasure to invite uh, the chair of a cert. <laughs> so please come on stage, Amanda. It will be a pleasure for, for us to be signing the MOU with the, your presence. And if you want to say a few words like uh, for our, a bright future of this collaboration, I think we really need uh, to be endorsed by, by you and by IA and by the people that support the mission and ISGAN. So I would like also to invite uh, John on board as an executive committee member delegated from Australia. 
and uh, maybe we can also invite uh, our colleague from the Korean Secretariat. Please come up with us, Kai. So how do you want to? Okay, so this is the. Sure. Do yeah. So yeah. I will add yeah. an important pen, but I give you the microphone. You have yeah. already one. I, I'm just trying to help you because you have a lot to balance there. So yeah, so I mean, I'm not gonna repeat everything that I said earlier, and I know that we're tight on time, but I think that um, the work that the Green Powered uh, Future Mission and ISGAN have been doing to work together, building on the successful uh, relationship that they uh, established a few years ago. I remember a similar event in Vancouver in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, which was, I think, the last time, well, it was the last time that uh, SEM and MI met together in person. Uh, and I know so many of us are happy to see people in 3D again. Um, anyhow, I, I just, I think there is so much that other um, TCPs, other uh, missions, other uh, some initiatives can learn from the collaboration between these two organizations. I'm incredibly impressed and looking forward to, to looking through the document that you just handed to me, Luciano. Um, and I wish you all the best. And so I don't know how we're orchestrating the signing, but uh, do you want to sign? I can copy? sign, but uh, thank you for remembering us. A very good moment in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. It was an excellent event. Uh, we were also making for the first time a workshop between MI and SAM. We were showing the need of collaboration in this important challenge we are in front of us. I'm signing. I'll give you a copy that you keep it as his gun representative. <laughs> You know, I've seen many um, videos, as I'm sure you have, of world leaders not really understanding the orchestration <laughs> here, so I don't think you should feel badly at all. You're doing quite well. <laughs> so is that yep. another one? Is Good. And we then can also take a picture again. Oh, they are taking a picture. So. Do you want it with you guys together? And I can... No, is it better with you in the middle? Oh, yes. well, <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Shaking hands with John. Yes. And uh, thank you for your strong support. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Last was, was important, and we are very glad that we come to this formalization. It's also good that we will be in Adelaide in one month's time, hosted by our Australian colleagues with the UNESCO meeting, also discussing the detail of this collaboration. In the MOU, we already anticipate some of the topic, but we need to know much further detailing what will be really the collaboration. But we have some very good uh, idea how to proceed. So I think uh, we are almost uh, here, so it is important to, to say that uh, in the final part uh, of our event, uh, we will be just uh, making these concluding remarks. We are almost uh, on time. And uh, it's important for me to invite uh, for the concluding remark again our good friend, and it was a pleasure working with you, John. Since the UK is colliding the Green Power Future Mission, I would like to ask you to be brief, but to give some very important word as a concluding remark for this event. Please. Thanks very much, and you know, once again, thank you to all the speakers and all the contributors to, to, to this, because it's been a um, you know, fascinating, fascinating session. Um, what have we heard? Um, how do I summarize it in, in 30 seconds? Uh, the, need for, the need for innovation, um, clearly, to, to transform the power system and the amount that needs to be done in a short period of time. But it's not just innovation, it's, it's regulation and policy as well. And so the first message is probably innovation policy going hand in hand. Um, I'm going to steal um, Renzo's sort of, um, point for the second one, which is collaboration and acceleration. And you know, the best way of accelerating what we're trying to do is to share information more successfully around the place. And that's why sort of what's happening with the Green Powered Futures mission and ISGAN is, is so important. And you know they're they're very very important parts of the breakthrough agenda. So you know I think the you know the action plan that has been produced um, is a, a great way of sort of driving things forward. And once again, I recommend people sort of have a have a sort of digest of that because there's some brilliant stuff there. Um, it's fantastic to see how the sort of the relationship um, with the sort of MI has sort of developed over the last sort of um, six six seven years. And you know I mean we started off with sort of ISCAN and um, Innovation Challenge 1 within um, the first phase of Mission Innovation. Um, and what we're seeing now, I hope, will sort of go on to be um, a 
more and more sort of productive um, relationship as things go forwards. Um, and that's probably all I, I want to say at the moment, apart from, you know, once again, to thank everyone for, for turning up and listening. Thank you very much, John. You said exactly what we, was needed for us. So thank you so much. So now we are really at the end. I would like to invite uh, Maria Robinson from the USDOE. She is the uh, director of an important office, of, uh, grid uh, Devel deployment office. I think is a kind of new office, but we would like to be in contact with you in future because it seems like a resilience system and the transmission and distribution, all development is uh, very important to you. And we hope that our two initiatives can also help you uh, be in contact in future. Please, the floor is yours. Just here on behalf of Secretary Grandholm and the entirety of the Department of Energy that as um, she serves as the vice chair uh, of this group, um, to say thank you all for coming out and participating in these robust conversations that we're having. I think the panel before us um, here at the end laid out a lot of the challenges that face us as we are working towards this transition, but we are very excited about the opportunities that are associated as well. And so we look forward to continuing our partnership with all of you moving forward and to hopefully um, find more ways in order for us to collaborate and work together in, in a really productive fashion. Um, I'm here uh, in part because I run this new grid deployment office, which is really focused on the transmission and distribution side, side of work um, and has a lot of grant funding um, out that we hope to be able to use to continue our place um, in, in the world of rolling out additional clean energy. So again, on behalf of Secretary Granholm and, and the entire Department of Energy, we're glad you're here and thank you so much for a wonderful discussion today. Thank you very much, Maria. Nothing better to end the, the closing remark from the host of this uh, very important event. And also US has an important role in this and as vice chair. So thank you for everything and thank you everybody for your capacity to be with us all the event. Thank you so much. <laughs> Stay tuned for new steps. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.